So, <clears throat> how in the way that uh, we became metalheads? Mm. You're probably wondering how uh, two religious Jews would be into something like this. Well, I want to tell you something. You can't judge a book by its cover. Right. So, you want to start? I guess I'll start. Uh, like most people, I was a um, uh, nerdy kid. I didn't... Uh, nerdy in the sense of being artistic, not being uh, uh, smart and good grades. But uh, I was. I always thought that the metalhead scene was something for losers, for drug users. <laughs> and... Um, and you basically unsuccessful people. So I I grew up. I tell you, I grew up like the first. I guess would you say metal? The first thing I was. I was about five. I was introduced to Kiss. Kiss Alive. The first Kiss Alive album was actually the first. Uh, I guess American uh, Western music in pop or metal that I was interested, that uh, got my attention. You know, being at that age, with all the pizzazz and, and the makeup and the special effects, it was really cool and I was instantly attracted to them. I was a big KISS fan. And then I sort of grew up, and, and of course that led to ACDC. Um, from ACDC, uh, I sort of lost interest in the metal scene. Um, not that ACDC is metal. No, it's not exactly metal, yeah. But again, it's it's the sort of the, the, the changing between heavy rock right, and... Right, right. You are uh, you are right that many people started to be metalheads uh, because of bands like Kiss and ACDC or Scorpions. Yeah, Pantera. I mean, right. They were. We all know that Dimebag uh, was a big fan of Kiss and Ace Freely. And today also in Sweden... You can find many, many metalheads that they love uh, Kiss. Or in Greece, they love so much Scorpions. Right. Good point. And so, from there, I, I, I sort of lost interest. And I had, uh, you know, my brother, my older brother, um, he got into Iron Maiden. Which album? Of course, another live album, which was uh, Live After Death. And uh, I... I didn't. I didn't want to listen to them. I said, "Come on, this, this, I'm not, you know, heavy metal head. Uh, get me out of it." I said, "Just listen, listen to this." And he told me, "Listen to the bass lines. Just that. Just listen to the bass lines." So okay, I put on the headphones. You know, the it was back in the in the early '80s. I'm listening to the the headphones and on the stereo, and I was listening to it, and I, it blew me away. I couldn't believe Steve Harris's bass lines. I've never heard anything like it before. Again, instantly, I was attracted to Iron Maiden, and the next album I bought was uh, Number of the Beast. And then we started collecting all the Iron Maiden albums. From there, it got heavier, of course. It got to uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets. We bought the album in the same the same week, couldn't believe it, that Cliff Burton died in the car in a car accident in the uh, bus bus accident i remember going to the local grocery store getting uh, i couldn't remember what kind of magazine it was it was some kind of metal magazine and we read about it that that same week he he, he died and, and and metallica was in almost a disaster looking for for a new base new bass player uh from metallica we got heavier and heavier from there, we got into Slayer, and then it got into, you know, I remember looking, we had one magazine with, they had a whole list of that, the best albums of that, of that year. You're speaking now about in, uh, in Canada. Yes, this, yeah. was, this was when I was living in Canada, and uh, the metal scene was exploding. This is in the 80s, in the early 80s, middle 80s. Uh, Rain and Blood, I, I purchased that as soon as I heard reviews on it. They, the Rain and Blood was from that magazine the, the best album out of uh, maybe 50 albums put out or something or 20 albums i believe they chose that so i was extremely attracted to it i said wow satan let's buy it 
it was in 86 i purchased it i was complete i couldn't understand the album when i listened to it it was so fast i couldn't understand i've never heard anything like it before and of course I, we bought all the other albums Ch haunting the chapel hell awaits the first album show no mercy uh and then it just got all sorts of other places went to anthrax and we started going shopping just for all sorts of metal albums annihilator anthrax we said that um An anvil anvil was anvil. there to uh we started going back you know i mean oh by the way i missed out black sabbath black sabbath was in between um between acdc and iron maiden we were getting into Black Sabbath. Live Evil was our first one when Dio was oh, Dio. of Dio. Great album. I loved Black Sabbath back then too. And, um, you know, then we got into like the 70s, the Led Zeppelin scene and the whole 80s pop scene. But in enmeshed in there was always metal. And it got heavier and heavier. We started, I started getting into like Batman's like Deicide. And, uh, Death Camp, Metal. Death Lab. Yeah. That, the, in the beginning of the 80s, it, uh, late 80s, early 90s, I believe. I believe the death metal scene started to ex explode. Deicide, Cannibal Corpse. I had a good friend of mine who I got into metal. He came back from New York and showed me the first Cannibal Eating Back to Life album. I said, okay, let's listen to this. Incredible. Obituary, uh, Sepultura, of course. Uh, death. Right. All that death, of course. Death, the first death album. You know, uh, bloody. What was the first? Uh, bloody forgot, gore. Uh, right, scream, bloody scream gore. Bloody leprosy, healing, uh, spiritual it's, healing, and then they made a turn. You know, human from human on was just incredible. So uh, yeah, and, and then ever since then, uh, is uh, completely interested in uh, in in death metal and metal in general. There was a time in my life where I thought that I'd had to. It, it, it couldn't I couldn't um, connect the two have, living as you know as religious spiritual life and uh, uh, you know listening to to, to metal I, it, it didn't work out with me but I realized that um, it could work it could work out because uh, it, it's uh, religious life doesn't dictate it shouldn't dictate of what of who you should be which I'll help you in your life and I incorporated it in my in my life and um, you know me being a musician I played drums for in the heavy metal scene for about 15 years um, I was in recruiting re re studio studio did studio work recording studios and making music and I had a few bands I was very into the metal scene um, I couldn't uh, couldn't live without it that's the music that I really really enjoy listening to i listen to other types of music but this is the best kind so i guess we'll leave it at that and we'll, we'll turn to you now okay <clears throat> like you in the beginning uh, when i was teenager i didn't i was not in, ex, in inside the music at all until i was something like 16 years old in my uh, in my school i am from athens from greece and uh, was one friend of mine in these years, his name was Kostas, I remember him until now. And his guy, he was a metalhead, a real metalhead, maybe the only or original metalhead in, in all the whole school. Hmm. He was always with uh, black t-shirts of his uh, favorite bands, Manowar, Blind Guardian, Skycled, uh, uh, what he liked, uh, Ice Earth, in, in these years. So we started to be friends. And from him, first of all, I remember that he was also, a, a, he liked very much um, Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. the books, mm -hmm. many years before that they became so famous uh, of the films. The... Okay, and uh, we, ha we, ha we had... Uh, many conversations about many subjects, politics, religion, philosophy. And for me, I, I could understand that uh, a man like him, 
a guy like him, he was also a metalhead. Because, like you said before, I, I thought that uh, metal is also for uh, for only for drugs and uh, people that they are not successful and the whole um, stereotypes against metal. So I said to him, "How you can listen to music like that, like this?" He said to me, "Okay, I will bring you a cassette." These years we were with the cassettes, you know. <laughs> Eight uh, tracks. <laughs> yeah, I will bring you a cassette. And tell me what you think. If you don't like, give me it back. He gave me, I remember, uh, I think that it was the fourth, yeah, the fourth album of Skyclad. The forefathers of folk metal from Britain, from, in, from England. Poverty, uh, Prince, Prince of the Poverty Line. Oh. He gave me this album. And when I started to listen, to the album, I was totally, I didn't understand what kind of music it, it is. I was so, so, so happy to find uh, this kind of music. I was very excited and uh, I came back to him and I said that not only I like it, but you have something else also. <laughs> he gave me their next album. Sky, Sky, of Skyclad, yeah. Skyclad. And I remember that uh, from this day I started to say to myself that I want to listen more and more and more about metal. One friend of mine, another friend of mine, he said to me, okay, now that, I now that I know that you like this kind of music, take the Black Album of Metallica. And for half a year, I remember I listen all all the time to the to, to these three albums. Mm -hmm. I started also to buy Metal Hammer of Greece, and that here I can say that uh, one of the most successful and interesting magazines of metal is especially Metal Hammer of Greece, and uh, is totally totally different from the Metal Hammer of England of today. And they are very, very special about to, to put to, to put people inside metal. Most of my knowledge of metal is coming from this magazine, and uh, I'm grateful about it and about them, about their uh, awesome work that they are doing. By the way, I think I think that the the the, uh, the uh, magazine that we used to read was Metal Mania. No, if yeah. I'm not if I'm not mistaken. In Canada, or it was not? Yeah, a... Well, uh, yeah, Canada, United States, West. Yes, yes. I think it was that. Yeah. And from this day, I started. I started afterwards. I was uh, in Europe in a trip, and there I I bought everything: Metallica, everything, Iron Maiden, of course, uh, Scorpions, Halloween. I started uh, Faith No More in these years. Megadeth. Yeah. Yeah. Sepultura, I remember that their first album that I listened was Beneath the Remains and I, th I thought that um, the album, it has one problem because it was so <laughs> so fast. <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, I thought about Rain and Blood. Ah, Rain and Blood I yeah. thought it was, there was something wrong when it was going too fast. <laughs> and from these days until now, 22 years afterwards, this is it. <laughs> Continue to be Metalhead. And I will continue. In, in, like a religious Jew, I became also religious Jew in these years. Orthodox Jew and... Um, religious all, metalheads. Yeah, religious metalheads. Orthodox Jews, religious metalheads. <laughs> but uh, in my point of view, uh, I don't remember that I have, I have a conflict between um, my spiritual way of life and practical uh, Judaism and about music. I said to myself, this is who, who, who I am, and uh, it's okay. For me, it's okay. For me, it's okay. For Judaism also, it's okay. So, I didn't uh, I didn't find a, a conflict between me, and I, I think that people that they are not have this conflict inside themselves, uh, the others also understand it. But uh, if someone has a conflict, so the others also, they see the conflict. Is something... Very good point. Yeah, it's something is, uh, that starts from uh, from from inside of uh, 
everyone. So, this is my way to metal. Highway to, to heaven, not to <laughs> Okay. Highway to metal. Yeah, highway to metal. Yeah. So, so from all. Israel, from Jerusalem, stay metal and stay heavy. <laughs>